I took her home. What a great crowd. Let me say it again. Hello, Michigan. Wow. Now, the Congressman Jack Bergman, Congressman John Molinar, and to the next United States Senator from the great state of Michigan, John James. It is great to be back in the Wolverine State. But I'm here for one reason and one reason only. And that is that Michigan and America need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. I mean, how about that speech last night? I had a pretty good seat, but I don't think there was a bad seat anywhere in America. Last night, President Trump laid out a vision about what he called the next great chapter of the great American. It really was. I want to talk to you about that vision, and I want to talk to you about that choice. Before I start, let me say I know everyone's hearts are where every American's thinking today are our fellow Americans in Louisiana and Texas impacted by Hurricane Laura. It was the worst storm of that magnitude to strike that part of Louisiana in 150 years. And we grieve the loss of life and the impact on our countrymen. President Trump will be traveling this weekend to the region. We've deployed FEMA and resources across the area we're supporting state and local authorities but let me just say to the people of louisiana and texas and all the affected areas we are with you today we will be with you tomorrow until you rebuild bigger and better than ever before so help us god but thank you all for coming out it really is a joy to see all of you but i'm here because i Stand with President Donald. When this president stands up for faith and family and the American flag, I stand with President Donald Trump. And when this president stands up for American jobs and American workers, I stand with President Donald Trump. And when this president stands up to the radical left and their socialist agenda, we stand with President Donald Trump. You know, four years ago, you in Michigan know, it wasn't just a campaign, a movement was born. A movement of everyday Americans from every walk of life. Here in Michigan, you believed we could be strong again. You believed we could be prosperous again. Michigan said yes to President Donald Trump. And I know Michigan's going to say yes to four more years of President Donald Trump in 2020. You know, the choice in this election couldn't be clearer. But as the president described last night, on the South Lawn of the White House, the stakes couldn't be higher. I mean, you've got a president today who I can tell you firsthand, having served at his side every day the last three and a half years, who's always put America first. He's rebuilt our military. He revived our economy. And he stood by all the God-given liberties enshrined in our Constitution, like the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, and the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms every day.
He appointed more than two courts at every level, including Justice Neil Gorsuch and Justice Brett Kavanaugh. And this president has stood for law and order every day and with the men and women of law enforcement. In our first three years, it was an incredible record with the strong support of partners in Congress, like Congressman Jack Bergman and Congressman John Molinar. We passed the largest increase in our national defense since the days of Ronald Reagan. And I got to tell you, as the father of a United States Marine and the father-in-law of a United States Navy pilot, I couldn't be more proud and grateful to serve with a president who cares so much about the men and women of our armed forces and their families. We're finally giving Marines, Coast Guard, and Space Force the resources they need to defend this nation. And with our allies in Congress, we cut taxes across the board. We're working families, businesses large and small. We unleashed American energy. We fought for free and fair trade. And in our first three years, businesses large and small created more than 7 million jobs, including 500,000 manufacturing jobs all across America. And that wouldn't have been possible without our allies in Congress. And I just want to invite you one more time. Would you just thank Congressman Jack Bergman and Congressman John Molinar for being such strong supporters of this president and this president's agenda? Thank you, men. Great job. In three short years, we created the greatest. In a word, we made America great again. And then the coronavirus struck from China. But before the first case of coronavirus spread happened in this country in a community, President Donald Trump did something no American president had ever done. He suspended all travel from China. He put the health of America first, and that decision saved countless lives. And I can tell you firsthand, it bought us invaluable time. At this president's direction, we launched the greatest national mobilization since World War II. We marshaled not only the full resources of the federal government from the outset, but we actually forged a seamless partnership with states across the country. And we partnered with the great private sector in America. It's incredible to think we re invented testing like Ford and General Motors. We actually produced more than 100,000 ventilators in 100 days. We distributed billions of supplies to our doctors and nurses and healthcare workers around America. And as we speak, working with our great innovative pharmaceutical companies, we're developing a number of treatments. They're known as therapeutics. Convalescent plasma was approved just a few days ago, saving lives across America. Now, last week, Joe Biden said that no miracle is coming. But what Joe doesn't seem to understand, it is America is the land of miracles. And we're on track to have the first coronavirus vaccine by the end of this year. American innovation has risen to the challenge, and provided the resources, the testing, and the supplies that are great healthcare way. Our hearts today go out to the more than 6,400 families here in Michigan who lost loved ones. Know that you're on our hearts and you've been in our continuous prayers. Truth is, our healthcare workers did an extraordinary job. Would you join me in thanking the doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, and first responders that stepped up and into harm's way throughout the course of this pandemic? 
You have made us proud. You know, thanks to the courage and the compassion of the American people, we're slowing the spread. We're protecting the vulnerable. We're saving lives. And we're opening up America again. And we're opening up America's schools again. You know, because of the strong foundation that President Trump pulled, it's remarkable. In the last three months alone, we've seen 9.3 million Americans go back to work. And in the days ahead, I promise you, we will continue to put the health of America first. And as we work to bring this economy back, we all have a role to play. But we also have a choice to make. Men and women across Michigan, I would just tell you to ask your neighbors and friends this question. As America is starting to get our footing again, as we're standing up this economy again, we're putting people back to work in record numbers all across Michigan and all across this country. Ask yourself, who do you trust to rebuild this economy over the next four years? A career politician who presided over the slowest recovery from a recession since the Great Depression? Or do you trust a proven leader who created jobs at a record pace across? Do it again. The choice is clear. To bring America all the way back, we need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. So we've been going through a time of testing, but soon we'll come to a time for choosing. And that's what brings me here today, because it's important for all of us and people across Michigan to understand the stakes in this election, the choice in this election. You know, I watched as much of that Democratic convention as I could. It wasn't easy. I mean, the Democrats spent the entire national convention attacking America and attacking Americans' president. But President Trump and I and our fellow Republicans, supporters across the land, spent the whole week celebrating America. We celebrated all we've accomplished together and all that we're going to do with four more years in the White House. You know, I love what the president said. He said, Joe Biden claims he's an ally of the light. But when it comes to his agenda, he wants to keep us completely in the dark. But you know, the American people are catching on. I was just over in Minnesota, where six Democrat mayors endorsed the reelection of President Donald Trump. And I don't know if you heard about it yet, but I heard there's a new poll out today. President Trump is leading in the state of Michigan. And so is John James. And I think it's because of the choice that we face. The leadership of this president, the vision that John James and these great congressmen are articulating every day. But the choice is remarkably clear. I mean, think about it. Joe Biden, in the middle of a global pandemic, Joe Biden wants to raise taxes by $4 trillion. But president Trump cut taxes across the board, and we're going to cut taxes for working families for four more years. Joe Biden wants to bury our economy under an avalanche of red tape, a $2 trillion version of the Green New Deal that would stifle jobs, stifle automotive jobs, 
right here in Michigan. President Donald Trump, well, he signed more laws cutting federal red tape than any president in a getting started. Joe Biden actually wants to end fossil fuels, to abolish fossil fuels. President Donald Trump, he unleashed American energy, made America energy independent, and now we're exporting energy for the first time in 70 years. And Joe Biden wants to go back to the days of economic surrender with China. He actually said just a few weeks ago that he wants to repeal all the tariffs that are leveling the playing field for American workers. Well, President Donald Trump stood up to China. We imposed tariffs to demand that China open their markets. The phase one trade deal is in effect. We're starting on the way to leveling the playing field, and this president will always put us first. And I don't have to tell the people, as a fellow uh, son of the heartland, I don't have to tell the people of Michigan about the impact that NAFTA had on jobs in this state and all across this country. It's really remarkable to think. And from the time NAFTA was signed into law and Joe Biden voted for it, we had 60,000 factories close all across the United States. You saw the impact here in Michigan. I saw it in Indiana. I saw entire communities in Indiana that had once been home to thousands of automotive jobs see those factories literally shuttered almost overnight. But all of that's changed. Because under President Donald Trump, NAFTA is yesterday the USMCA is here to stay. The USMCA is a trade deal that puts American jobs, American automotive jobs first. The experts tell us it could create almost 600,000 new jobs right out of the gate, including 50,000 manufacturing jobs. And here in Michigan, the projections are almost 30,000 automotive jobs from the USMCA. That's what we call promises made and promises kept. So it's been about national security. It's been about jobs and prosperity. But under this administration and the choice in this election, it's also about values. President Donald Trump from the first days of this administration, has stood for the religious freedom of every American of every faith. On the National Day of Prayer, President Trump ended the last administration's assault on the Little Sisters of the Poor. Truly remarkable. A group of nuns who've taken a vow of poverty, who serve their Lord and their communities with the most vulnerable and the most in need, were actually literally brought into the courts to be forced to adhere to mandates in Obamacare. The day the Supreme Court of the United States upheld President Trump's decision, Joe Biden said he would reimpose the Obamacare mandates on the Little Sisters of the Poor. But men and women of Michigan, we're not going to let it happen. We're going to re-elect a president that stands for religious freedom. We're going to re-elect President Donald Trump. And it's not just about religious liberty. You know, throughout his career, Joe Biden always said that he opposed using taxpayer dollars to fund abortion. But last year, bowing to the radical left, Joe Biden abandoned his historic 
opposition to taxpayer funding of abortion. And now he supports taxpayer funding all the way up to the moment of birth. Well, President Trump and I oppose taxpayer funding abortion at home and abroad. This president signed legislation to allow states to defund Planned Parenthood, and President Donald Trump will always stand for the right to life. You know, the choice in this election could not be more clear. When it comes to the safe home. I mean, this president knows that national security begins with border security. If you don't have borders, you don't have a nation. Joe Biden, he's for open borders, sanctuary cities. He wants to give amnesty to 11 million illegal immigrants, and he wants to give free health care and free lawyers to illegal immigrants as well. President Donald Trump secured our border made record investments in enforcement, and we've already built 300 miles of that border wall on the southern border of the United States. And with four more years, we're going to build it all, and we're going to fix this broken immigration system once and for all. And finally, this president from our first day in office has stood for law and order and stood with the incredible men and women of law enforcement at every level. The people of Michigan know what the president and I know. But most of the men and women who serve in law enforcement are the best people in this country. But as we pass through this challenging time, just as our nation was beginning to recover, We've seen violence and chaos in the streets of our city. Now, President Trump and I will always support the constitutional right of every American to peaceful protest. But rioting and looting is not peaceful protest. Tearing down statues is not free speech. Attacking innocent civilians and law enforcement will not be allowed. And those who do so will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. You know, at the Democrat convention last week, violence and chaos that's engulfing cities across this country. So let me be clear. Whether in Kenosha, Portland, or Minneapolis, the violence must stop. Too many heroes have died defending our freedom to see Americans strike each other down. We will have law and order on the streets of our cities for every American of every race and creed and color. Now, Joe Biden says that America is systemically racist that law enforcement in America has an implicit bias against minorities. When he was asked whether he'd support cutting funding to the police, he replied, yes, absolutely. But under President Donald Trump, I promise you, we will always stand with the men and women who serve on the thin blue line of law enforcement. We're not going to defund not ever. You know, President Trump and I know what John James knows, a son of Michigan, a son of Detroit. We don't have to choose between supporting law enforcement and standing with our African-American families. We have done both. We will continue to do both. We will support our police and support our African-American and minority families for four more years.
This administration has already provided support for law enforcement, 4,000 new police officers on the street. And we've worked to provide new resources for law enforcement to improve. With our African-American community, I have to tell you, I, I couldn't be more proud to be vice president to a president who in our first three years saw the lowest unemployment ever recorded for African-Americans, the highest investment in historically black colleges and universities ever, 8,000 opportunity zones for families in our cities, and this administration will support the right of every parent to choose where their children go to school, regardless of their income or area code. You know, when you consider their agenda, it's clear. As the president said, as I said the night before, Joe Biden would be nothing more than a Trojan horse for the radical left. The choice in this election has never been, never been higher. Last week, Joe Biden said that democracy was on the ballot. The truth is our economic recovery is on the ballot. Law and order is on the ballot. But there are things on the ballot, I believe, far more fundamental and foundational to our country as well. In this election, it's it's not so much whether America will be more conservative or more liberal. It's not whether we'll be more Republican or more Democrat, more red or more blue. I believe with all my heart the choice in this election is whether America will remain America. As President Trump said last night, this election will decide whether we will defend the American way of life or whether we will allow a radical movement to dismantle and destroy it. Here in the heartland, I know what we're going to do. Here in the heartland, we stand for faith, family, freedom, and the American flag. Joe Biden and the radical left want to set us on a path to socialism and decline. But I know that Michigan and America are going to vote to build a future on freedom and opportunity for all. We're going to vote for four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. You know, Joe Biden and the Democratic Party have been overtaken by the radical left. Their agenda of higher taxes, socialized medicine, open borders, abortion on demand, and cutting funding to law enforcement would set our nation on a downward path. Michigan. And I appreciate you all coming out in a little bit of rain. Because I know this movement is unstoppable. But we got to decide, men and women of Michigan, we got to decide right here and right now that Joe Biden will never be president of the United States. We're going to re elect President Donald Trump for four more years. You know, I've served with this president for the last three and a half years. Known him just for four. Some people think we're a little bit different. But I got to tell you, we've got to be close. I've seen him when the cameras are off. And I can promise you, Michigan, you called it right. President Donald Trump is a real deal. He's a man who says what he means and means what he says. He never quits. He never backs down. And I can tell you, he's never stopped fighting to keep the promises that he made to the people of Michigan and the people of America. So now it's our turn to fight for him. 
So I need you to bring it. It's on, Michigan. I need you to bring all this enthusiasm every day between now and Election Day. Talk to your neighbors and friends at worship, at work. Put it on your Facebook page. Tweet if you must. I think it made the difference in 2016. And I'll never forget, you know, there were only two different kinds of polls. In election, ones that showed us losing by a lot and the ones that showed us losing by a little. But you know what? I never doubted it. John, I never doubted it. Because I was traveling all across the country seeing good people like you. You know, he'd travel to one state, have tens of thousands of people come out. He'd send his running mate there, and literally hundreds of Americans would come out to see me. But it was all the same. I saw that determination. And I could tell that people were tuning out the pundits. They were tuning out the elites. We were talking to one another. And that's what we got to do again. I mean, every day between now and election, I mean, you just tell somebody. You know, I was over in Traverse City the other day. I ran into Mike. And he spent like, he spent like 45 minutes just talking about everything we'd gotten done in the first three years alone. And the living it's made and the choice of this man. And just go there and lay it out. Because I promise you, the most powerful media in the history of this country is today and always has been word of mouth. It's when someone who knows you and respects you hears from you about an issue of importance. So we need you to talk to your neighbors and friends across Traverse City, all across the state of Michigan, and all across this country, and tell them what this president's done. And tell them what four more years is going to mean. I mean, four more years means more jobs. Four more years means more judges. Four more years means more support for our troops. And it's going to take at least four more years to drain that swamp. So you got to go tell them. And when you, when you go out there and talk to your neighbors and friends, I encourage you to have faith. Have faith in the people of this good state who saw the leadership and the vision in a candidate four years ago and that they can see through all of the noise and the opposition and the attacks of the last three and a half years. Have faith in the common sense and the common wisdom of our neighbors and friends. And also, I'd... Just say, as I get ready to jump on the plane and head back east, have that other kind of faith as well. You know, I, uh, I really do believe in those ancient words that Americans have clung to through much more challenging times than we could even imagine. That if his people who are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray. Always done through the long and storied history of this great nation. He'll hear from heaven, and he'll heal this land, this one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So pray for America. Pray for all the American people. So men and women of Michigan, thank you for coming out today. I look forward to being back again and often. And I leave here today a little bit damp, but a lot more confident. I'm absolutely confident if all of us do all the we we need to do between now and to our neighbors and friends about all that we've accomplished for this country. We lay out the choice 
between what this president offers for the country and what the other side wants to do to America. I think we're going we're gonna to lead a great American comeback. We're going to make Michigan and America stronger and more prosperous than ever before. We're going to make Michigan and America safer than ever before. And with Congressman Jack Bergman and Congressman John Molinar in a new Republican majority in the United States House of Representatives. And with John James in a renewed Republican majority in the United States Senate. And with President Donald Trump in the White House for four more years, and with God's help, we, we will make again. Thank you all very much. God bless you. God bless Michigan and God bless America. Let's go get it done.